The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Carrie Strauss here with realagriculture.com. I am here today with another Pole School episode, and I have here with me Dr. Manbir Rakar, who is with Montana State University. How's it going today? It's been awesome. Such a great crowd over here, and it was really fun to interact with all the growers. Absolutely. So today you talked about soil acidification. Talk a bit about the pH scale. What, where does soil acidification stand? Okay, so to get the basics right, so there is a measurement for soil pH. What pH is, it's the hydrogen ion concentration. So the pH scale varies from 0 to 14. If the soil has pH somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5, you're good, your soils are good, it's a neutral range. The moment it starts decreasing from 6.5, let's go, it's going towards 5, 5.5, that process is known as acidification. How quickly does soil acidification occur? So uh, it really depends on what kind of cropping system you have, what kind of soils you have, how much fertilizer you are putting. We had some experiments in this area of Big Sandy and what we observed that if you put 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre you might see 0.14 unit decrease in pH with each 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre application. But again, it's going to vary what kind of soil, how much nitrogen you're putting, what kind of year you're getting. So it really varies. So uh, how pertinent is this? Why do farmers really need to be paying attention to soil acidification? Well, soil acidification, as I mentioned, it affects rhizobium activity, it, it is toxic, it makes uh, aluminium toxicity pretty, uh, uh, it makes aluminium toxicity pretty prominent to the crops. We have seen over here 50% to total crop failures just because of soil acidification. That's not what you want to see, right? So really need to be careful about it. So uh, of course the question is, what can we do? Okay, so if you have a field and you have figured out that you ha your field has an acidification issue, you can mitigate it, you can adapt to it, or you can prevent it. I want to stress prevention is really, really important. I'm going to tell you in a sec why. So you can mitigate. To mitigation, liming is the go-to strategy. There are different products in the market like sugar beet lime. It's free of cost. You just pay for the hauling. Uh, there is pearl lime, there is egg lime, liquid lime. So those are some of the products that we can use to raise the soil pH. However, liming can get very expensive. Sugar beet lime, even though it's free of cost, but if it's coming from Billings to like Big Sandy, you know the diesel prices these days, it's gonna cost you somewhere around like 150 or even more than per acre. If you're using products like pearl lime or liquid lime, your cost could be even like $1,000 per acre. So it's expensive to mitigate it. And another big issue, what we have been observing, especially in this area where there's not a whole lot of rainfall, lime doesn't dissolve really quickly. It is not that soluble. So what we have observed is if we don't till the lime, even after four years, that lime hasn't even moved to like two to four inches, which is the seeding zone. So if you are someone who doesn't want to do tillage on your land and your logistics are something like you can't put lime on your land, the best strategy would be just to be aware beforehand so you don't get there. So for the adaptation, there are two strategies that we have found pretty good. One, you can go for acid tolerant varieties that can perform well in acidic conditions. Second is to put the phosphorus fertilizers. So what we have observed that even if your soil phosphorus levels are say like 50 ppm, but your soil is acidic, put that phosphorus fertilizer, what it's gonna do, it will tie up all the aluminum that is toxic to the plants and the crops will grow better. However, 
again the phosphorus fertilizers are just like skyrocketing again not a great option but a tool in the to toolbox for you to consider moving on to the most important part the prevention so how you can prevent it since ammonium based fertilizer cause it and it's usually so the strategy would be to use that fertilizer judicially just apply the amount that is needed by the crop do the spring sampling right before or apply the fertilizer right before when it will be critical for the crop if you have resources go for split nitrogen application or just use the crops that just require less nitrogen for example legumes just don't require any nitrogen at all so that could be another option so uh, another question that producers often have is how does rain impact it the acidification so soil acidification is actually very prevalent if you talk about the eastern united states area because they get a lot of rainfall as compared to the western area it's very prominent over there just because it rains a lot there what happens is the rain leaches all the base cations down into the profile so the soil becomes acidic but out in montana region rainfall is not an issue that's causing it it's mainly uh, the ammonium based fertilizers that's what we think is happening so are, are manure applications an option or, or what about cover crops any of those so manure application could be a great option so as i said it's ammonium based fertilizer that's causing acidification so if you have an option to put manure as a nitrogen source go for it that's gonna help if you can use cover crops legume cover crops to supply nitrogen to your crop that's another option you can use legume crops in the rotation uh, to give the end credits to the following crop so th those are some of other options okay any other messages you'd like to send to producers well uh, all I want to say is just be aware even though soil acidity hasn't been around but it has been increasing at an alarming state out in Montana out of 56 counties 24 of them have been identified at least one of the farms have been identified with pH 5.5 so just be aware it's not a myth about soil acidity it's real it's happening we have recorded pHs of even less than 3.8 so it's there just be watchful uh, if you see any kind of unexplained crop growth issues go scout it go sample your field try to sample zero to three inches instead of zero to six because acidity really concentrate where you put your fertilizer and try not to composite samples of good spots and bad spots in your soil that will really give you the real soil ph values okay thank you very much thank you very much thank you